Rarely do I make a reproduction that is of a specific artifact instead of a general style of artifacts. At the North Dakota Heritage Center and State Museum, I saw an artifact on display, a knife blade from the Oxbow Complex that immediately captured my interest, and I had to reproduce it. Oxbow Complex projectile points just so happened to be one of the few point types I have found while doing archaeological fieldwork. In this video, I flint up a replica of that Oxbow knife from the museum and talk about the Oxbow Complex from the northern Great Plains of the US and Canada. The Oxbow Archaeological Complex dates to calibrated 5,700 to 3,500 years before present during the Middle Plains Archaic Period. Diagnostic projectile points from this complex occur from the south edge of the Boreal Forest in Canada, down south to northern Wyoming, from western Montana and British Columbia, east into western Minnesota. Interestingly, the dates from Oxbow sites in the northern part of the range tend to be later than the sites in the southern part of the range in general, which seems to show that the complex developed in the south and spread its way to the north. During the Middle Plains Archaic, people were mobile hunter-gatherers. Unlike historic indigenous plains cultures, they did not have bow and arrow technology and they did not have horses. At Laddles, also known as spear throwers, were likely the primary hunting technology the Oxbow and other Middle Plains Archaic people used. Their belongings would have been carried on their backs or by dogs dragging travois. Like historic indigenous plains cultures, bison were an extremely important resource for food and other materials, and following or anticipating bison herds was probably a large focus for Oxbow complex people. People during the Middle Plains Archaic first started making rings of field stones to help provide a firm base for tents, as the later plains cultures did for making teepees. These stone circles are features often found by archaeologists in the plains region on the surface of the ground. During seasons when resources were plentiful, there is evidence that Oxbow people came together to form groups, perhaps as large as 40 to 60 people. During other times of the year, they would have broken down into smaller group sizes. The Oxbow Complex is identified by Oxbow projectile points, which are small to medium sized points with ovate or straight blade edges. These points have shallow side notches, but more notably a base that is deeply concave. This concavity causes a portion of the point between the base and the notches to have a fairly distinct, eared appearance. These points would have been hafted to at lateral darts or four shafts for at lateral darts to be used for hunting. Oxbow knives, like what I'm making, are similar to Oxbow projectile points. However, the base of the knives is less concave and the blade is longer and wider. Oxbow knives are much less common than Oxbow projectile points. Besides the artifact I saw in the North Dakota Heritage Center, I was able to find a few examples and mention of these knives in archaeological literature, from sites like the Sydney Burial and Gray Mortuary site. Oval-shaped biface knives were also found at Oxbow sites, 
but these lack notches, so they may not have been hafted to a handle like the oxbow knife that I'm making would have been. Oxbow complex lithic artifacts also include discoidal and lanceolate biphases, small triangular end scrapers, perforators, drills, unifacial tools, flake tools, simple choppers, and cores. Organic artifacts found at these sites, when preservation allows this to happen, includes items like bone and antler awls, spatula bone segments, long bone scrapers or beamers, bone choppers, and drilled clam shell pieces. Knife River Flint, which occurs in both Dunn and Mercer counties in North Dakota, was a favorite source of stone for making tools for Oxbow people. Even in areas distant from the source, Knife River Flint was often used. Both the artifact I'm replicating and my reproduction are made from Knife River Flint. Another type of stone that Oxbow people used, even when far from the source, is obsidian from the Yellowstone region. Otherwise, the Middle Plains Archaic people used local sources of stone. At an archaeological site I helped record in eastern North Dakota, the oxbow points there were made from Swan River Chert and Red River Chert, which both can be challenging materials to work. As mentioned before, oxbow points were used with a atlatl and dart system. The atlatl allows a hunter to throw a spear with greater accuracy and force than a hand-thrown spear. Ice patches from the greater Yellowstone region have unveiled organic artifacts, such as atlatl darts and arrows, as they have melted away. Cold temperatures at high elevations allowed these ice patches to remain frozen for centuries and keep ancient organic artifacts from decaying. At lateral darts, arrows, and foreshafts or both were found in these greater Yellowstone ice patches, made from woods including willow, birch, pine, and fir. Scientists were able to identify the wood species by cutting small fragments of the wood and viewing it under a microscope and comparing its characteristics to known tree species. In addition to the organic artifacts, extensive lithic assemblages have been found in these ice patch sites, which include diagnostic points like Oxbow and Pelican Lake. Sadly, none of the darts and shafts have projectile points still hafted to them after thousands of years. Direct carbon dating of the wood has shown that at least some of the atlatl darts fall into the time range for the oxbow complex. While the presence of oxbow points shows that oxbow complex hunters were definitely visiting these ice patches, the dating of these darts cements that some of these organic artifacts belong to them as well. It is unknown exactly why these ice patches at these latitudes attract animals, but some explanations include seeking the coolness to regulate body temperature, hydration, and escape from black flies and mosquitoes. Oxbow hunters were aware that animals engaged in this behavior and pursued them or ambushed them at these ice patches. Bighorn sheep and bison are the most common faunal remains found at these ice patch sites. Many of the sheep remains recovered only include certain elements, such as the crania. This suggests that the hunters cut off the undesirable portions of the sheep's body and left them, which makes carrying the rest of the animal away easier.
In addition to hunting bison and bighorn sheep, Oxbow complex people also hunted moose, caribou, elk, pronghorn antelope, wolf, coyote, fox, marten, rabbit, goose, and various small animals as evidenced by faunal remains found at Oxbow sites. In addition to animals, Oxbow complex and other Middle Plains archaic cultures would forage for plant foods. While they probably gathered a great variety of plant species, the only plant remains that have preserved at Oxbow complex sites are charred hackberry seeds and cherry pits. People during this time in the plains did not have pottery, but instead used hot rot cooking. These people would have placed stones in a fire to heat them to cook food. While these could have been used to heat the food directly, these hot rocks were more commonly placed into hide bags containing water and food to boil it. Boiling allowed plains people to extract grease from bones and use this grease to make pemmican. The repeated heating and cooling of these rocks caused them to eventually break apart and then be discarded. These broken and burnt pieces of rocks are known as firecracked rock by archaeologists. A number of burial sites have been found that are from the Oxbow complex. The Grey Burial Site is perhaps the most impressive of these in terms of the length of its use and the number of individuals buried here. The Grey Site was used from 3200 to 960 BC, which is much greater than the span of time the Oxbow complex existed, showing a continued use by people as their material culture changed through the centuries. In all, 304 individuals were buried here at the Grey Site in nine distinct burial units. Artifacts associated with the burials include large notched bifacial knives, typical and atypical oxbow points of several varieties, scrapers, worked flakes, bone tools, shell gorgets and pendants, copper beads, and faunal remains including sets of eagle talons. Ochre was found in a number of the burials, sprinkled over and rubbed onto the bones. The majority of the adult bodies were exposed for some time after death, allowing the flesh to decompose before the bones were actually buried. Immature individuals were buried directly after death at the gray site. Males and females are equally represented in the burials here. Some of the burials were of multiple individuals' bones, densely packed together which suggests that they were free of soft tissue before burial and the bodies were rearranged as they were buried. In many cases, adult lawn bones and crania were rubbed with red ochre. Based on the arrangement and packed nature of the bones, it is likely that some of the individuals were bundled up in buffalo hides at their burial. The continuity of use at the Gray Site Cemetery and of burial practices past the end of the Oxbow Complex goes to show what an important and sacred aspect of culture that death of burial was to these people and to so many other human cultures.
sites like those found in the Greater Yellowstone ice patches, and the Grey Burials are not only important for understanding the Oxbow people, but for understanding the entire history of the people in the Plains region. Oxbow hunters lost their lattle darts, or threw away those that broke when they stalked animals at high altitude ice patches, allowing archaeologists to find these organic artifacts beautifully preserved when they are normally absent in the archaeological record. The Grey site exhibits a large number of buried individuals, who are cared for even after death by their community members or by their families. Based on the similarity of the burial treatments to those of later Plains peoples, it is possible that these later burial traditions had their origins thousands of years ago starting with the Oxbow people. Some of these burials contain knives like the reproduction I made, likely hafted to a wooden handle. Whether made by the deceased individual or by one of their community members, those people who were buried saw fit to place some of these tools with those who had passed on perhaps for the dead to use for whatever came next.